We're going to begin the meeting of the Landmarks Commission, and I'd ask Jenny Fernandez to call the roll, please. Landmarks Preservation Commission public hearing and meeting of August 3rd, 2010. Chair Tierney? Here. Vice Chair Vengo Chao? Commissioner Bland? Here. Commissioner Burns? Here. Commissioner Shapin? Here. Commissioner Gurner? Here. Commissioner Gratz? Commissioner Moore? Here. Commissioner Perlmutter? Here. Commissioner Ryan? Here. Commissioner Washington? Okay, thank you very much, and let me welcome everyone who's come to this public meeting. Let me thank Pace College, Pace University, Judge Keating, who has facilitated this uh, venue for us, very generous and uh, very appropriate venue, and obviously has the capacity to, uh, to accommodate everyone who wishes to be at the public meeting. And uh, before our Director of Research, Mary Beth Betts, begins her brief presentation on 4547 Park Place, I want to explain exactly where we are in the process and what to expect today for those who are uh, perhaps new to the, the procedure or not as familiar as many others. Uh, on July 12, 2010, the Commission held a public hearing to consider the possibility of designating 4547 Park Place as an individual landmark. That public hearing was the forum for public testimony, and it was extensive. And having heard that testimony and considered all the submitted materials, that, uh, that hearing was closed, and the Commission reconvenes today, as it customarily does, and it's our normal routine, after the public hearing and after that discussion, to reconvene in a public meeting, which we are doing today, to discuss whether, in the commissioner's judgment, and the commissioners today are the, as I said at the last meeting, we were there to listen and to hear the public. Today, uh, it's our turn, if you will, to, to have in this public meeting the opportunity to ourselves have a conversation and a discussion and decide and reconvene in this meeting to discuss whether in our collective judgment this building meets the criteria for designation under the New York City Landmarks Law. But first, as I alluded, Mary Beth Betts will uh, make her presentation. After that, the commissioners will discuss and consider whether to designate the building. When we have concluded our discussion, we'll take a vote. That vote will be either to designate the building or remove it from the commission's calendar. Mary Beth, please. Good morning, commissioners. Um, a public meeting item number one is an item proposed for designation LP 2434 45 to 47 Park Place building at 45 to 47 Park Place, Manhattan. The landmark site is Borough of Manhattan Tax Map, Block 126, Lot 9 in part, consisting of the portion of the, of the lot bounded by a line beginning at the southeastern corner of the lot, running westerly along the southern lot line 54 feet 5 inches to the southwestern corner of the 45 40 47 Park Place building, thence northerly along the exterior of the western wall of said building and parallel with the easterly side of West Broadway to the northern lot line, thence easterly along the northern lot line to the eastern lot line, thence southerly along the eastern lot line to the point of beginning. Completed in 1857 to 58, this five-story store and loft building is a fine example of the Italian Renaissance-inspired palazzi that flourished from the 1850s through the 1870s in the former textile and dry goods district on and around Broadway near City Hall Park. It was constructed for Paul Spofford and Thomas Tillotson, proprietors of one of the city's most prominent shipping firms. As you can see on the map, while number 45 to 47 Park Place shares a large tax lot with another building, only 45 to 47 Park Place is being considered for landmark designation. By drawing upon the architectural vocabulary of the Italian Renaissance Palazzo, the builders of mercantile structures, like 45 to 47 Park Place, sought to project an image of prestige and economic power. The building retains much of its historic fabric, including its original ground floor Corinthian colonnade cast by Daniel D. Badger and company. Its stone-faced upper floors appear much as they did when the building opened, 
featuring molded window surrounds, molded projecting lintels, bracketed sills, and second floor balconettes with faux turned balusters. Flanking the building's simple, continuous cornice are two scrolled brackets. It also retains many of its historic, likely original, two over two, double hung windows, although their glazing has been painted. Alterations include the replacement of its storefront infill and the installation of a metal fire escape, which probably dates from the early 20th century. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary Beth. And I will begin this conversation and discussion. And uh, I've listened closely and carefully to all the arguments that have been presented, both for and against designation of 45 Park Place a building first considered for landmark status 1989. Have we have just heard, it was built as a speculative building in a style that had been made popular by the nearby A.T. Stewart building at Broadway and Chamber Street. It's relatively intact, and the building is located on a side street adjacent to other buildings that were built at different times and have not been calendared by this commission. As I stated at the public hearing, under the landmarks law, the question we must answer is whether the building has a, quote, special character or special historical or aesthetic interest or value as part of the development, heritage, or cultural characteristics of the city, state, or nation. In reaching a decision, my, my, part of my process was I take note of the fact that the commission has designated four historic districts in the immediate vicinity of this building in 1991 and 92, just two years after Park Place was first brought forward for consideration. Those historic districts contain many examples of the store and loft buildings that, are, that characterize the early development of Tribeca. These districts fully express, in my judgment, the uh, history of Tribeca's development by including not only store and loft buildings of similar vintage to the Park Place, 45 Park Place, but also many examples of the building types and styles that developed after the mid-19th century. I also take note of the fact that the Commission recently designated two other store and loft buildings nearby that are of similar vintage and style, 2325 Park Place and 311 Broadway. And let me quickly go to those two uh, designations, uh, these recent designations. When I compare, and part of the exercise here as this Commission exercise, that this is the commission that's a, that is the expert agency in matters of this kind. It is up to this commission and the discretion of the commissioners based on all the, the facts and circumstances and material before us to exercise judgment and discretion about the, the whether or not buildings uh, qualify or rise to the level of landmark. So as part of that process, uh, for me, and I, I believe others, we'll hear from others in a moment, uh, in reviewing those other recent designations, when I compare 4547 Park Place to the designated 2325 Park Place, I believe the latter is a better example of the type and style of building. It's a more ornate example of the style and furthermore was designed by Samuel Adams Warner, an architect who was known for this type of building, and 45 in contrast, it is simpler in design and its architect, its architect is unknown. When I compare 45 Park Place to the designated building at 311 Broadway, I believe that while the former is more intact and perhaps a better example of the building type, it is located on the side street, whereas 311 Broadway is a rare remaining example of this type of building on the main commercial thoroughfare of the area, Broadway. Uh, I should note that the Tribeca East Historic District contains a half block row of buildings on the north side of Worth Street between Broadway and Church that are almost identical in design and age as 4547 Park Place. By virtue of their continuity in number, this row of buildings has a sense of place and streetscape that paints a vibrant and convincing picture of what this part of the city was like when this style of store and loft buildings were common. Um, I've carefully considered also the other architectural, social, historical, and cultural reasons that have been put forth in favor of designation and ultimately find them unpersuasive in terms of this decision uh, that we will make. Finally, I note, that both, I note that both the city councilwoman representing this area and the local community board have both expressed their opposition to the designation of this building. And for all these reasons that I've just stated, I've come to the conclusion that 45 
47 Park Place does not rise to the level of an individual landmark, and I will vote to remove it from the Commission's calendar. We're going to have the rest of the Commissioners weigh in. I have a statement that I will briefly summarize at the end from a Commissioner who couldn't be here, and then we will take a vote. Commissioner Bland. Thank you. Um, I've also spent um, a lot of time thinking about this case and a lot of time walking the neighborhood uh, with my eyes and my mind wide open. I've spent a lot of time thinking about and studying what an individual landmark is in our city that has only about 1,100 of them out of a total of one million buildings. I agree with much of what the chairman has just um, stated, but I have my own thoughts and would like to continue reading my, my own thoughts here in this statement that I've prepared. Although spec built 45 Park Place is a handsome, well-proportioned and generally intact commercial store and loft building of the Italian Renaissance Palazzo style. It fits in with the streetscape and with its neighbors, but it does not really stand out. Although we know from probable conjecture that the ground floor cast iron Corinthian columns are from the well-regarded Daniel D. Badger foundry, we do not know who designed the building, who the architect was. Many of the other Palazzo buildings were designed by prominent architects of the day. Additionally, I noted that key preservation advocates, the Municipal Arts Society, the Historic Districts, District Council, and the Landmarks Conservancy, did not support the nomination of 45 Park Place as an individual landmark in 1989 and did not testify in support at our recent hearing either. These actions, or inaction, of these activist watchdogs of our city's historic resources spoke loudly to me. Finally, I noted in my many walks up and down the blocks surrounding Park Place that many Palazzo buildings still exist, cheek by jowl creating whole streetscapes. The story of the, of the Palazzo building typology in New York became visually clear to me, as it had not when I stood in front of 45 Park Place, isolated as it is from other Palazzo buildings. In other words, these handsome Palazzo buildings reveal their historical meaning best when seen in whole groups i.e. in a historic district. So I have come to believe that this is the way New Yorkers in the future will be able to best understand and interpret the brief glory of the commercial palazzo typology in groups and within historic districts. So therefore I do not think that 45 Park Place exhibits by itself the special character or aesthetic interest required of it to join the rare company of the other 1,100 individual landmarks in the city of New York. Thank you. Commissioner Chapin. <clears throat> we are here today to consider whether 4547 Park Place should be designated an individual landmark. While individual landmarks are not limited to works of great architects or buildings that are associated with important people or events, they should have some special character or special historical or aesthetic interest or value or a combination of these qualities. Not every old building, even those more than a century old, should be designated as an individual landmark. After carefully considering 45, 47 Park Place, I find that it was not designed by a noted architect, but by an unknown architect. Moreover, it was not an exceptional example in either design or decorative features of the Italian Renaissance-inspired Palazzo style. 
and does not rise to the level of its near neighbor, 2325 Park Place, and certainly not to that of the A.T. Stewart Building that inspired so many buildings of this type. Store and loft buildings of this type are also well represented in the Tribeca East Historic District. The absence of support for designation from preservation groups, both during the first reviews of this area in 1989 and 90, and today re reinforces the assessment that this is not a building of special aesthetic character. With regard to the building's history, it was probably built as a speculative building and was occupied by a variety of commercial enterprises with no consistent history of use. The most interesting occupant was probably the American Press Association from 1893 to 1910. But I do not find this single piece of the building's uh, history compelling evidence to warrant designation. For all these reasons, I do not support designation of 45, 47 Park Place as an individual landmark, and I agree with uh, the remarks of Chair Tierney and Commissioner Bland. Commissioner Perlmutter. Uh, yes, um, as has already been stated, this building was calendared in 1989. In the years since, buildings of its type, age, and style have been included in numerous historic districts. Although this building might be a contributing member of an historic district, that is not the proposal before us today. <laughs> Instead, it is being considered as an individual landmark, and its character, style, and detailing do not rise to the high standard that that level requires. Commissioner Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I agree with much as that has been said. I appreciate that we are not considering use of this building or religion. Then I would have to admit that I would be somewhere between the Council of John Jay and John Lennon. John Jay, a founding father in New Yorker, was the first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court. And John Lennon, also a New Yorker, who in his wonderful song, Imagine, wrote astutely about religion. I will, for public awareness, make one historical note about adjacent Church Street, for which it is a veritable historic district itself of first churches of a variety of denominations over the last 370 years. The first property owner on Church Street and Park Place was a Dutch minister of our earliest and oldest Protestant Dutch Reformed Church in the 1640s. Later, the property of the city's second oldest church, Episcopal Trinity Church, also on church is the yard of St. Paul's Church, where our nation's first inauguration service of George Washington took place. The city's oldest Catholic church, St. Peter's at the corner of Barclay and Church, is on Church Street. The first African-American church, Mother A.M.E. Zion, was at Church in Leonard. And perhaps the closest of the historic churches to Ground Zero was the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church on Liberty Street, which was destroyed on 9-11. I would like for a few moments to pay attention to 4547 Park Place as a significant address, made important in a split second on the morning of 9-11, which I will review from my own personal experience on 9-11. At 9.03 a.m. when United Airlines Flight 175 hit the South Tower, we all witnessed the last moments of United Airlines Flight 175 and the lives lost in that moment and we watched it replay over and over on television. I probably watched it as much as anybody because I had just come out of the World Trade Center subway station at Chambers and Church Street when it happened. I witnessed it from Chambers and Church Street where none of us knew that the fireball which we saw rise up the tower had been caused by a plane crash. From my angle, I could not see a plane hitting the tower, only the huge ball of fire. I had just come out of the subway to hear an explosion and a loud gasp from people on Church Street. I looked up to see the fire climbing the tower. Somebody yelled it was a bomb. The pieces were shooting out of the building and spraying down toward us. I didn't know it was a plane engine, a tire, fuselage, and a landing gear. I had no idea what I was witnessing. I thought a movie was being made, and I thought it was being made dangerously close to the public. The fire seemed to be out but the building looked like it had been badly damaged. It was a moment when I was trying to figure out what was happening that I heard someone say in a tone of absolute disbelief, people are jumping from the building. 
As I heard it, I was looking at it. I saw two people falling down the building. If I hadn't heard those words at the exact place that I was looking, I don't think I would have known what I was seeing. I knew it wasn't a movie. I saw three more people dropping. A few seconds or a few minutes later, I really don't know, I have no idea how long I stood looking at the sky, but I heard another person near me say that a plane had hit the North Tower by accident, he said. I, my eyes had been locked in on the space between the two towers, and I looked to the north face of the North Tower, and I saw a gaping, huge, smoldering black hole from American Airlines Flight 11. And it was set against the backdrop of a beautiful blue sky. I've never seen a photograph that conveyed the enormous size of that hole. It did not look like the building should even be standing, but it did not look like an accident on probably the most beautiful, clear blue sky of the century. My instant thought was that America was being attacked by terrorists. Before I turned to leave, I looked up at both buildings and prayed for the lives of the people I had seen die or dying, and for those many, many people who had already died, whom I just knew were going to die. Then more people, emergency workers, firefighters, and police would actually enter those towers to save lives will never be lost on me. For almost 10 years now, including this morning, Whenever I come out of the subway at Chambers Street or I see the area of the sky above the World Trade Centers, I find the place where the towers stood, and I think about 9-11, and I think about those people. I don't want to confuse the issues about 47 Park Place. It is not directly on Ground Zero, but it is a part of Ground Zero. And that's what gives its address, its space, great significance. It cannot be seen at all from ground zero. To the issue of designation as an individual landmark, Mr. Chair, I agree with what has been said. I do not find the importance of 47 Park Place to be its architecture. It is in proximity, particularly on Chambers Street, of some of the finest cast iron buildings ever made, but it is not itself near their distinction. I do, I do think about the significance, though, of its connection to the events of September 11, 2001. However, I, I make it akin to a guardrail on the highway where fatalities, fatalities have occurred. The guardrail is not preserved. Likewise, the memory of that day does not reside in the landing gear or the building. I believe it resides in its space, its address, if you will, its connection to the sequence of horrific events on 9-11. Last I looked, we do not landmark the sky, but I wish we could. I do not believe it should be landmarked, but it should be marked, not necessarily with just a plaque, but in the public mind. Whether the cast iron rusts and falls apart or whether it is replaced by the most famous community center in the world or a church, its space will always memorialize the people who were in those planes and in those buildings and in the sky. I do not support the designation of this property. Thank you. Commissioner Ryan. It is important to restate what the basis for decisions is by the Landmarks Preservation Commission. The law which established the commission is clear that the use of a building may not be considered in determining its worthiness to be or to not be a New York City landmark. Time and again, an owner or developer asks us to make a decision on a property that will essentially be a ruling on land use or zoning. We demur, as I will demur now. 45 to 47 Park Place does not rise to the necessary standard to be designated an individual New York City landmark. This type of store and loft building is widely represented throughout Lower Manhattan in many of our historic districts. It is not in a row of similar buildings, which would increase its importance. There is no special cultural history represented by 45 to 47 Park Place. Its various owners and tenants represent the everyday progression of commerce in New York City. The location of 4547 Park Place on a side street is the same as many such buildings that are in the lower Manhattan historic districts. There is no known architect who is responsible for the design of this building. 
In fact, there are fewer designed elements on 4547 Park Place than other similar store and loft buildings. Lastly, although it is not a criterion for designation, it is worth noting that both the community board and the city council representative are opposed to designation. After careful consideration of the facts, and in agreement with the chair and my colleagues, it is my opinion that 4547 Park Place does not meet the standards of an individual New York City landmark. Thank you. Commissioner Burns. Uh, as much as I would like to opine about the appropriateness of an Islamic center two, mile, two blocks from ground zero, I find that I must adopt the stricter, humbler stance of a landmarks commissioner which is the worthiness of 45 Park Place as an individual landmark. Buildings of this character, that is, a commercial palazzo-style building from the 1850s, have been protected mainly as parts of significant landmark districts, notably four districts in Tribeca. 45 Park Place is a relatively well-preserved example of a style that is significant in that it pointed away from more romantic styles such as Italianate and Gothic revival toward what would culminate in the mature classically inspired work by McKim, Mead and White and others a generation later. The standards of quality for an individual landmark are much higher than those for buildings in a landmark district. They might include being designed by a noted architect or being associated significantly with a historic event, or it might be a building of such rarity, such as a federal house, that even modest examples should be preserved. It might even be significant in that it is an unusual survivor of an earlier pattern of development, such as a townhouse on West End Avenue. <clears throat> While the case of 45 Park Place scores points in several categories, it does not make the final mark in my book. One, it is a good but not exceptional example of its style and was designed by an unknown architect. Two, there are reasonably large numbers of these buildings already protected in lower Manhattan and they are not that rare. Three, its main historical significance is its association with the events of 9-11. But the debris field around Ground Zero was widespread, and one cannot designate hundreds of buildings on that criterion alone. Four, its location on a side street was a commonplace one. I went to view 311 Broadway, and while it is not as intact architecturally as 45 Park Place, it is the last survivor of the Palazzo type on Broadway, New York's chief thoroughfare. On these grounds, it qualifies as an individual landmark. While I would certainly include it as worthy of inclusion in a landmark district, the neighborhood around it is not of district quality. For these reasons and those articulated by other members of the commission, I conclude that 45 Park Place is not of sufficient nature to be designated as an individual landmark. Thank you. Commissioner Washington. A hard part of our task is often to try to divorce ourselves from the reasons for landmarking which have nothing to do with landmarking law. The question is often how many buildings of a particular style representing a particular era or period must be preserved to inform future generations of the importance of that period. While the cast iron, cast iron era has been recognized as an important architectural period in the history of New York architecture, Sure. Not every cast iron building or building with cast iron features should or must be preserved to create this legacy. Having heard the historical and architectural reasons proposed for the landmarking of 4547 Park Place, I find that the building itself falls short of the distinctive features or historical background present in many of the other cast iron buildings in the area, such as those mentioned before, um, 23 Park Place and 311 Broadway, which have been landmarked. In addition, the fact that other landmarked buildings in the same area have more architectural, possess more architectural details, are more ornate, and are more unique, all of these reasons um, lead me to the conclusion that it's not possible for me to support the landmarking of 4547 Park Place as an individual landmark. 
Thank you. Before I call on Commissioner Gerner, briefly summarize, as I said, I would, Roberta Gratz, who's not here today, asked me to read a very short statement when, as follows. When we at Landmarks are asked to decide if a building is worthy of individual designation, we are asked to think about the specific building in a very different context than for a historic district. We are given detailed information on the building by staff and presented with additional detailed information at a public hearing. Most importantly, the building under consideration must rise to a higher standard as an individual landmark than necessary for a historic district. In this case, I have found nothing in either staff research or presentations at the public hearing to persuade me that 45 Park Place is worthy of a singular designation. In fact, very little information at the public hearing supported the substance of a landmark's designation, the most compelling testimony underscore the inadequacy of 45 as a singular building. This partial cast iron facade is an interesting and appealing one at the street level, at least at the street level. I would hope the building could be deconstructed and the worthy parts reused on another site. However, those few worthy parts do not add up to a single individual landmark. And then I will now ask Commissioner Gerner, please. I, too, uh, as my fellow commissioners have stated, have given this a great deal of thought. And I walked the uh, area and looked at the building and the surrounding buildings and the ones that we've compared it to. Um, as we all know, it was built as a speculative uh, building designed by an unknown architect. And uh, the building was calendared in 1989. And although the commission saw the building or the, um, we never moved to designate it even uh, to include it as part of the historic districts, uh, nor was there support by any of the preservation groups uh, for this building. Uh, it's a typical store and loft building, and although it has its, um, its special character, it's not unique, and it doesn't come up to the standards of the 2325 uh, building, which is a better example of what was designated um, even though the owner was opposed to designating that building. Uh, in addition, 4547 underwent a number of alterations. The window design and the lintels, uh, of the lintels and the molded surrounds are the same on all floor, upper floors. Um, the uh, three to five stories have bracketed sills. Below the second story windows, the sills are replaced by balustrades that spin the width of each window. The cornice is simple, flanked by two scrolled brackets, uh, one at either end of the double windows with a visible seam in between the two buildings. In comparison, the 23 to 25 Park Place's most impressive feature is the hierarchy of fenestration uh, with richly carved surrounds that the architect Warner designed for the upper stories. Also, the cornices are significantly more detailed. Uh, we must make this decision based on the true value of this building and its place with others of similar vintage and style. Um, for all these reasons, I believe that 4547 Park Place does not rise to the level of the 1,100 individual landmarks in this city. It is not rich enough, and there are designated examples of this style which are of a much higher quality. Thank you. Thank you, all commissioners. I will make a motion now to remove this building from the Landmarks Preservation Calendar. I move for the reasons set forth in the discussion that the building at 4547 Park Place in the Borough of Manhattan lacks a special character or special historical or aesthetic interest or value as part of the development heritage or cultural characteristics of the city, state, or nation and that the building and Manhattan tax map block 126 Lot 9, in part, be removed from the Landmarks Preservation Commission's calendar. Second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I count that vote to be 9 to 0 in favor of removing, the Landmarks Preser removing this building from the Landmarks Preservation Commission's calendar. And conclude the meeting. Thank you all very much. <laughs>